But um, the Kanye thing. Yes. Um, which I mentioned before, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. There is a little bit more to this now, which has come. Where is it? Where are we? Where are we? Please. Those are like, you know, URL, um, Rap League, Rap Battles. Yeah. That's like those rhyme schemes. Like, I've seen And he like, loves all of that as he well. He loves it. And he was, those, those kind of rhyme schemes, but he delivered it so effortlessly. I'm going to go forward a little bit. Still a vibe. Oh, and I believe that. So my losing nights are still a vibe. My losing nights are st is still a wave. There's a double play on that though. He's talking about losing to push a T. The next line you see it follows. We're not. We're not, man. We're not in it. I don't think Pusha even is feeling that way anyway. Because he will know, you know what? Like obviously you're a fucking huge superstar, whatever. But on the microphone, you see me. And I think that's 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 where Pusha's ego lies. It's but like, then, yeah, you could do all of that, but like on the microphone though, like this, yeah. you see, you know what it is though. If they went again, which is hard to say now because the information dropped, he lost. It's what it is. If they went again and Pusha didn't have that level of T, what would it be? If it was just a straight bar in battle out? Because a lot of people say that it was the T that carried him, absolutely, the information, hundred percent, rather than the actual. I feel like when I listen to it again, push I like is hard. Push Let's executed not ever it very well. Yeah. He executed all the other bars around it very well. But Duffy if he doesn't well. have that though, if he doesn't have that, does he win? If he doesn't have that, to me, what I think is, is that he says in his bars a lot of things that we, you know, it's like when Since you say, you know, like when you say to someone, say the fat kid. Yeah. There's a fat kid in school, whatever. Yeah or just on road or whatever. And we always just call him fat. It's not right, but we just call him fat, yeah? Now it's time for us to really, you know, have some type of cussing match. And then I just mentioned that you're fat. It's like, eh, we know that, we've heard it. It doesn't stink, it's not a, and I feel like Pusher probably comes with the, you're moist, you're, you know, you're crying over girls, you're, and it's like, yeah, we hear it though, but, Mm. Like, what else is there? With Drake, I feel as though he's probably so, maybe a lot more emotionally invested in in something like that, in a situation with Pusha that he may take it a lot more personally. But with that being said, Pusha said some real personal stuff as well, didn't oh, he? Crazy. When he talked about 40 and the sickness. and So you know what? Now maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll Pusha still might, maybe Pusha still might have that because yeah. I think when that all happened, what was it? Drake was saying, or some people were saying that he went be the, below the belt and all of that. And Pusha was like, but this is rap though. Like I'm willing to do that. And obviously he was, he mentioned my wife. So if he's going to mention my wife, then I'm going to go all the way with it. So I feel in this, at this time, Pusha would probably, he may win that again. And he may say something super, super disrespectful. And he'll probably get away with it more so because Drake, being such a superstar, he can't say certain things though, really. Can't, can't. He could never turn around and say, if if um, one of Pusha's guys had the same sickness that 40 did, yeah, and then Drake dissed that, directly dissed that. No, that's, you're looking at Twitter and Instagram and like, thing and they're looking <laughs> at cancellation. Well, let's, like, like, let's go back, let's go back years back to a similar example before social media was about, Jay-Z and Nas. We know Jay dropped super ugly, and it was very derogatory. Remember, yeah, yeah. very disrespectful because it was disrespectful towards women. Yeah, yeah. So he starts talking about, you know, we got more in common and all of that stuff. Yeah. And, and then you look at it now. He talked about fucking um, Nas's baby. Throwing the a baby seat or baby something. Seat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and even back then, women had a problem with that because it was like, you man are beefing, but you're bringing like 
a, a, another woman into a baby mum, innit? Could you imagine if Jay-Z did that? Today. Imagine Jay-Z was at that same height and he did that today. That's what I'm saying. You'd be looking at women going, what is this guy doing? Like, it's, 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 you're going to get cancelled. And he, he said he regretted that. He apologised yeah. for it. And that's what I'm saying. Drake, if he took it to where Pusha took it to potentially, we'd probably be watching him doing an apology tour right now yeah, yeah, yeah. to save all the bags yeah. and all of that stuff. So he got, he got outwitted, man. He got outdone. He got yeah. back to the corner. They did it well. And... Push is probably still waiting for that again. He's probably still waiting for that again. But back to the, the situation between... Oh, I didn't even get to play the ball. Have someone put you on a gildan if you play with my seed. So he's saying you could design all these fancy Gap trainers, Adidas trainers. I'll put you on the cheapest t-shirt, bro. Right, right. Forget all the fashion. You want to do all that high end? Play with my seed. You go on the gildan right now. Might even be a fruit of the loom on a different day. Just keep playing around. Right. So what is that? Me and you've had some type of conversation. Recently. We was even going to try and squash this, me and, me and you, Kanye. We was going to do that. But then we we're right back in the same place again, like immediately. And see with the address thing and that, send that to your guy, innit? And then come to my yard then, if you're going to do all of that. Let's do, if you want to go there, let's just go all the way there. But um, They're never going to go all the way there, though. Absolutely not, because Kanye's like not like... I mean, let's not ever get it twisted. Kanye is not swingers like that. Not that I could imagine anyway. But no, but even what we just said about Drake, because of who Drake is and the superstar is, you're not, what's well, nothing's happening, bro. No, no, no. You know, I'm not doing, there's just two, you know, I'm not like Pac and Biggie or even absolutely way beyond Absolutely not, that. yeah. But I'm <clears> not going to take away from the fact that I do believe that there's, at times, certain conversations that are had, that are taken there, where men are being serious and saying, look, yeah, link me in the desert. Let's just, just me and you, I bring one Don, you bring one. And do you know what? It wouldn't even surprise me if it's actually happened. Mm. Not Drake or whoever, but I reckon that's happened. I reckon at one point, man said, you know what? We're gonna, let's link in a car park somewhere or whatever. Just, I bring one Don, you bring one Don, and let's just do what we're doing. And then we just shake hands afterwards or whatever and leave it as that. Because Between them it, two? No, nah, I'm not saying between oh, them two. Okay. I'm just saying, I think that that happens within music. I okay. genuinely believe that. And sometimes, like, even when you look at fist fights, sometimes, mm -hmm. when there's those type of organisations here yeah, where men have linked up and they just had the square dance or whatever now, yeah? After it, there's that neutral respect. Where it's like, all right, cool. We're done now. Is it over? Yeah, cool. It's done. I'm never doing gone. that nowadays. Nah, of course not. People but, showing um, up to fist fights with knives and shit nowadays, bro. Yeah, exactly. But, um... A little while after this anyway, Drake leaked the um, the song with uh, Andre 3000. What was it called? Party, Party Time. Party Time. Something like that. Cold rhythm, by the way. <laughs> Cold. I listened to that. Andre Crazy. 3000 is a special rapper. Oh, man. yeah. He's so good. He's so cut. So good. Like, when he's barring, it's so effortless. I know. It's nuts. His storytelling ability as well is crazy. And his cadence. Oh my God. he can use God. the words and make them sound and like the, his voice, it's the clarity, the way it cuts through, man. He is special, definitely. People said, oh, they were like, oh, like, I saw people talking about, why would he do, like, why would Drake do that? He's brought Andre 3000 into this and blah, 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 blah. To me, I'm like, really, Andre 3000 isn't involved in this, yeah? This might mm. even be one of the reasons why it didn't even come out in the first place. Yep. Do you get what I'm saying? I've mm. done, Kanye's hit me and told me, yeah, I've, I've got an album, Donda. This is what the theme of the album. You put out a statement on Dre 3000. Yeah, you, you can talk on that in a moment. Um, you know what? I'm going to do my verse. Man's gone in the studio, done that. I handed it to my man. 
and the next minute he's <laughs> heard Kanye's thing. These things happen, you know. Yo, you might gonna have to ease that. Or <laughs> I'm, I'm not clearing it or take me off. If you yeah. wanna do that, just take me off, I don't really. But even with that being said, even with that being said, it's clear that Kanye and Drake do not like each other. I couldn't see Drake seeing that and putting Andre 3000 in that. It's like, oh, okay, I've heard that. You're running your mouth. When it's time for me to get in the booth, I'm coming, I've got some shots straight to your head. It's not to my man. Like, mm-hmm. it's not to him. It's, this is this has got nothing to do with him. And I just thought, when I, when Drake actually did that, I didn't know that he leaked it. I just heard it. And then I see people talking about he leaked it and all of this. I'm like, well, if Drake did leak it, then clearly Drake's going back in the booth. Yeah. Because he's heard this. He wants everyone to know that when you hear the rhythm that I've got for my man, and I'm licking off his head, Don't understand it's a response. It's a response. Don't say I mean. I say what I mean. Right. <laughs> it's a response. You said what you said, so I'm responding to it. Don't say I'm the bad guy when I come and I start saying all the stuff that I said. But you know what's so deep as well though, Chuck? So this is how deep I've studied this. <coughs> you know that song, No Friends <coughs> in the Industry? Yeah. On there, he said he says in the chorus, yeah, you hit us up, now we owe you something back. So he's acknowledging that, Pusha, Kanye, you done me. You dropped the bomb, everyone went mad about it. You hit me up. I owe you something back. It's not done. Yeah. So what I'm saying now is, I believe that, <clears throat> here's my take. I believe he has a mad piece of tea to drop about Kanye West. A mad piece of tea. And can't, he can't kind, just drop can't, it. That's kind of one. P- potentially. And he can't just drop it because he'll look like the bad guy. So let's allude to what everyone's, the rumours that have been going around that Kanye has even addressed himself about Kanye, poten- I mean, about Drake potentially sleeping with Kim Kardashian. If he did, he if he just him. came out and offered that information, as things stand right now, before putting out that this, he just offered that information. He looks like a real scumbag because everyone now, girls start going, Drake's such a nasty guy. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like he's done this, he's done that. Like da da da. If you now go, well, man's dissed me. He's been getting at me. Look, here's the evidence for it. Look, and then you present some sort of tea, whatever that happens to be. People will, it takes the edge off it a bit. Do you get what I'm saying? Now people go, oh, it's warranted. It's yeah, warranted. Yeah, yeah. Like he said his name, he's been dissing him. He's saying, he's saying, what, did, what was Kanye's dissing? Kanye? This is the most high end beef in the history of beefs in music. He was like, I'll <laughs> hire everyone from ACG. Yeah, yeah. The night division that. at ACG. Like, whoa, you're yeah. going to take all the workers. Like, yeah, yeah. what did he say? He's, Kanye said something like, um, next time I call you to come write for me, don't ask any questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the hilariousness <laughs> of it. In hip hop, when man are beefing, you're not supposed to have a ghostwriter, but he's dissing the man that writes for him and then claiming it and, and using it as a diss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you hear the irony in it, Chucky? Well, he says, when, he, he says, um, when I say, uh, why, was it W-Y-D, just say, yeah, I've got it written for you or some shit. What? Like, what? <laughs> you're dissing a man that's writing, writing for you, you and yeah. using that as the diss to diss them. We're living in a parallel universe, bro. This was never hip hop. And do you know why that's a mad line to come with anyway? Because what you're doing is essentially confirming the fact that he's a writer. Yeah. While people are sitting here saying, questioning his pen, yeah. you you are confirming in that moment, no, nah, he writes, yeah, but we, he wrote for me. But Chucky. But we knew, we know this, I'm just saying. people have, Diddy went on the Breakfast Club and said that Drake was writing zero to 100 for him. Mm. And that's how they had beef because Drake just kept it for himself and put it out and stole it. Mm. in his eyes he and that's why it. he slapped him when he saw him but people just like to ignore that yeah. the narrative is Drake don't write his music let's run with that because yeah. we don't want him we don't want him near the top 5 anyway yeah. he's not from the culture he's not from the hood he's not this he can't be in the top 5 let's take him out ghostwriting yeah it's mad it'll be interesting to see how this plays out though how I'm, ex- think I'm expecting out? huh? Is Drake, do you think Drake's dropping a Lucy a, a diss record soon yeah let me tell you something if it's like a back to back Club yeah, banger that has really hurtful lines in it. It's oh, Kanye's yeah. gonna lose his mind, bro. He the lost his thing mind. is Kanye has that in the locker, though. You know. Oh, facts. Do you know this song? Kanye has Kanye has the club smash hit this record in the bag. Oh yeah, he actually has it. Whether he taps into that or not is a whole next thing. And whether he wrote it or it. not, whether he wrote it or not, it's a whole next. Doesn't thing. matter. It doesn't. Because with this him, game, it, it doesn't matter. We don't know if with Drake as well. Really, if we get really down to it. Yeah, but yeah. 
I mean, we don't, but we, we do. do. We know. We don't, that. but we do. But with Kanye, there's a fifty percent charge that he didn't, he wouldn't have written it. But that would be okay. Drake we don't, is like we don't hold him to that same standard, charge. though. Yeah, we don't hold him to that same standard. Mm. It's a, a whole different thing. So, which are they're two different types of albums, anyway. Mm. Um, George, it uh, was annoys me as well, though. Like, see that disc record, yeah. It's so good. The beat's good. Mm. Kanye approached it good. Andre killed it. And it's like, it sounds like nothing on Donda. Maybe that's why they didn't make Donda. It sounds like Life of Pablo, Kanye. The production's more soulful and, do you know what I mean? That should have been on there. That definitely should have been, been on You think it should have been, should've been on Donda? I think it should have been on Donda. I think it should have like it fits on He could have made that work. In some way, Kanye, Kanye <laughs> could have made that work. Yeah. He could have made that work. Why didn't he and to me, I, to me, I see that as... This is speculation here. I feel like Kanye fucked that up. Mm. I feel like Kanye did the verse, all of that type of stuff, and Andre 3000 wasn't comfortable with it in one in whichever dynamic, and it ended up just being the way that it did, innit? And like, what are you gonna do? Put someone else on it and keep the same verse? You're gonna keep... It, it wouldn't have fit if he just was on it by himself and he was just doing that. It wouldn't have fit. I don't like when artists do that as well, by the way. Like, there's one thing where, you know... We've seen it in our scene where a man might send someone a song for a collaboration and then they sneak a couple subs in there for someone else and you get dragged into the beef. Yeah. So an example could be like Dave and Stormzy with Clash. Yeah. And, you know, Stormzy has a few subs for Chip and then now Chip's like, all right, ball both of you by association. Yeah. There's a difference between that still and saying, I'm Kanye, Andre, jump on this and I'm just going to diss Drake blatantly yeah, say yeah. his name a few times on this. If I'm Andre 3000, I'm like... Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is this is, a, this is a violation. That actually happened here. That happened. That happened with, um, <coughs> what was it? Tiny and Stormzy. We said, ask Sony why they dropped the No, what was the one? The Sony bar. Sony why they dropped the potato. That. Nah, it was like. Who was that? Was it? Yeah, ask Sony why they dropped the potato. Oh, right. What song was it? What was it called? It was on junk food, isn't it? Was it on remember. junk food? It wasn't on Happy Birthday. That's my favourite Tiny. Yeah, project. that's, yeah, that's. We need to talk more about that project. That's his magnum way. opus. Oh my god, for sure. But um, Stormzy didn't know that that was what he was doing on there, and Stormzy went straight on Twitter and was like, "Yo, but look at the irony of it now." Yeah, exactly. In hindsight, right. he would have kept know, it. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's mad how things turn out, it's isn't crazy, it? I can't man. believe it. I just at the end of it all, I just want to see. I want to see Stormzy and Chip just fucking have a conversation and just deal with that privately yeah and it just be over with do you get what i'm saying if it's super super personal i'd rather them just do that than it to be a, a lyrical thing but if it's not that personal then i want to see them do free for free but that's a conversation for another day well we've had that conversation anyway um back to tsu real quick yeah the r kelly thing the r kelly thing mm. they sampled half a, half on a baby yeah Obviously, Drake was getting a little bit of backlash for that because it's R. Kelly, isn't it? R. Kelly's looking like he's going to jail for all the shit that he did, yeah? And it's the whole Predator stuff. And I do feel, th this is what I will say, yeah? I feel like whoever was behind the rhythm, even though I didn't even hear the sample, by the way, I couldn't catch it. I know the, I know half of the, half on the baby. I know the song, but I couldn't, I didn't hear it too much on there. And I think a lot of people have read the headline and they're just running with the headline, and it wasn't a thing that they'd actually heard themselves. But it's cool, it's whatever. R. Kelly is um, down as like a writing credit or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think they slightly dropped the ball with that. I love the rhythm. I think they did it on purpose. All right, let me finish before you even say right, go, 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 I think they slightly dropped the ball with that. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. Because yeah. I think that even though R. Kelly doesn't own, he doesn't own, he don't own his music, you know. R. Kelly signed some terrible deals back in the day. Mm. And that was to do with the fact, he used to talk about that. I think he talked about it a lot. But he's talked about it a couple of times anyway, and other people have talked about it. He was illiterate. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, yeah. And early on in the 90s, he was just signing stuff and just getting checks or whatever. Now it's just come to turn around that he doesn't even own half of his shit. And on top of that, I think a part, a section of it actually now goes to like some of the victims and that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. A section of it goes to some of the victims and stuff. Right. But I'm like, yeah, you could have just left it. It could have just not been nothing. Yeah. It could have just been nothing. Even if he didn't own it, even if he doesn't own the music anymore and it goes, even if it all goes scattered out to all of the victims. Yeah. 
everyone that was sexually assaulted and stuff all gets a slice. I like the idea of that maybe with the back catalogue and uh, stuff that was happening <laughs> happening at the time that he was doing that. I like the Not idea new of material. that. But on new material, I'm like... Distasteful. So this is my theory and, I, and I'm with you on all of that, Chucky. I believe that these men don't drop the ball. It's, the, the stakes are too high. The levels are too high. Full E, Chubbs, all these men are in the studio. They're knowing exactly what's going into what. They that know what they're doing. That ball is too big to drop. Yeah, bro. they're just Drake. They don't drop the ball. This is this is very, very thought out, premeditated stuff. And I think they've done it for this reason, for us to sit here and talk about it. And it's enough to not get Drake cancelled, but it's still enough for everyone to talk about it and go listen to TSU to find out what the madness is. Let's say what it's you're business. saying is true, yeah? That is outrageous. That's the music industry. Do you know why? Because <coughs> there's so many different artists that you could have used aside from a paedophile. But it's That's just, what some people would say. But it's just like what Kanye did, except very much more subtle. Yeah. Kanye brings Marilyn Manson Outrageous. on the fucking stage Outrageous. in Chicago Outrageous. on his mum's house. Outrageous. That's, that's the idiotic way to do things. Here, Absolutely. I want people to talk about this. Here, I haven't really thought it through. I just need to have this moment with the baby. The baby's here. Yeah, we can We can make... This is already on 100. Let's take it to 1,000. Marilyn Manson comes on stage. What did I say to you last episode? If R. Kelly wasn't in jail, he would have been on the stage with them. Do you know? They would have been the three <laughs> most cancelled people that? right now. Could you imagine that? Do you know what, though? I was having a conversation with someone about this, yeah? And they had quite an interesting take that um, Kanye did that for those reasons, of course, yeah? For people to talk about it. Of course he did, yeah? But also to feed into the, you know, you was talking about, um, you gave the examples on the last pod about each rapper almost um, being synonymous to God. Yeah. Yeah. And Kanye being like Jesus in a sense. Yeah. yeah. They were saying that they felt like he was doing that out of, of course, the publicity stuff, push that to the side but also on the forgiveness thing. Okay. Do you understand what I'm okay, saying? It's okay, the okay. forgiveness aspect. So little baby went out on stage and said all of the stuff that he said and whatever, yeah? Is he, is he sorry for what he said? We don't know. <laughs> but let's just say he's sorry for what he said, yeah? It's like, you know what? I'm not canceling you. I'm not canceling you. You come stand next to me. Yeah. On the biggest stage, I'm going to let you know that I, like, I am next to you and I support you. It's kind of almost like what, which might be a bit different. It's kind of almost like what P Diddy did with um, Chris Brown. Remember yeah. when um, the whole stuff with Rihanna happened, mm. Chris Brown was living in Diddy's house. And a lot of people were saying, why is he living in your house? He's an abuser. Why is he in your house? And he was like, yo, yeah, he's a, he needs some support. He needs right guidance, now, whatever. He needs guidance. He needs all of those type of things. And if we just push them away, then they're never going to learn. It's going to be the same thing over and over and over again. Now, the difference is, is that Diddy was doing that in private and yeah. he was like, you know, you need some help. I'm going to come and I'm going to help you or whatever. My man's coming out and he's doing this in public, but he's doing it all almost from that sense, from a public, a public side as well, but from a narcissistic aspect because he wants everyone to talk about him. Yeah, so it's the, he's it's made, the he's, yeah, he's it's him. all part of the brand. It's all part of the brand of the God and the Jesus, Jesus, all of this type of stuff. But it's part of pub. It's all in that part. Do you get me? And it's and it's the fact that he's brought him into a spectacle that he's charged people to come in and see. Right. So he's 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 monetizing off of this fuckery. But just quickly as well, it, it I can see what you're saying there with the forgiveness thing because it's like, what's he saying in the hook of the song? Guess who's going to jail tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God gone, God gone pace. What do you say? God gone post my bail tonight. Yes. So he's basically saying that. He's saying, you man, they're trying to throw you in jail, cancellation, metaphorically, but the only person that can really judge you is God. God's mm. going to post your bail or God's the one that, you know, you seek forgiveness from. That's the only thing that matters. Yeah. So he's bringing these man out and saying that. I get all of that. Yeah. But my bro, like you brought them out at your album listening thing. Let's call a buck a buck, innit? You ain't, like you said, they say you lot aren't in some private church somewhere no, no, no. seeking forgiveness from the Reverend, innit? You, you've brought him out in a, in a musical arena in Chicago, <laughs> charged people an arm and a leg to get in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then brought him out and made him part of this 
That like, it's a farce, bro. Yeah, like it's much. just ridiculous. Whereas Drake and them man, they knew what they were doing, but it's very subtle. It's very, it's very like okay, you know, like we're gonna put him in there. People are gonna talk about this. They know people are gonna talk about this, but it's still not enough to get man in trouble. It's just, I don't know. It's I nasty. Can't. Do you the know what? Nasty. I personally can't see Drake knowing about that like that. I what? Can't. I can't see him not knowing about it. Carol, come on, tell him. He, they know. Like, the re- okay. These are the most the re- intricate, meticulous t- people all right, Tell out me why. There. Tell me why you could you could not see Drake not knowing about because, it. Because it's like oh. what we said back with the Pusha T thing. He's got so much brand deals, so much shit on the line, being the mega star of Drake, the brand of Drake. For them to be in the studio, piecing this together, saying, yeah, we're going to use the R. Kelly sample on this, because they, they've got all the flipping stems and everything. They know what's going for. He's putting it together. For them to not think, oh, what, people are going to have a problem with R. Kelly. Like, they've had that conversation in the studio, bro. Like, of course they have. Let me tell you this. I think Drake would have, it may, I don't know if it would have been some type of conversation. Maybe he may have known about it. But let me tell you this, yeah. The relationship that Drake and 40 have is a very special and trusting relationship. 40 is so... Um, key into the music aspect in what Drake is doing. Mm. I could imagine, this is speculation, I could imagine 40 sitting down and saying, this is the direction that we're going to go and this is where I feel like, this is what where I feel like you'd be in a pocket here, whatever, all of that type of stuff, yeah? We've been doing this together since, even before so, so far gone. For me, I don't necessarily need to question the intricacies in exactly what it is that you do because you do what you do really well and I trust you. Yeah. I'm com- it's like it's almost like it's almost like it's kind of like management in a sense. You know like you got certain art- a manager's job is mm. essentially to make sure <clears throat> that there's certain things that their artist doesn't even need to think about. He even says it in the bar. What does he say? In the future uh, there's a future bar where he says on the remorse. future don't he says future doesn't even show me he just signs the, signs deal, the deal or whatever yeah, yeah. whatever. But I don't think that that's what happens, but he's still speaking to the fact that like Future was there from the absolute beginning. When these when Future comes and says to me, "Yo, this is what like this came, came through," I'm gonna say, "Yeah, okay, cool." No, but I think maybe you hear it. Oh, has now made you think that. No, I didn't. I just said <laughs> this has come to my mind as I'm saying it. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't thinking it wasn't that deep. No, I, but I'm I, just saying that like <clears throat> I genuinely believe that Drake trusts my man so much here that it's like. This yeah, the beat sounds cold. Whatever my that. man's on that, I'm doing that. It's, I, it's I, I, it I agree. With I think that. that forty, if anything, forty and whoever else were the ones that were having this big conversation about whether we should use the sample or not. Uh, but even that even that, but, but, no, even yeah, 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 yeah. But at, at the point that it becomes a proper conversation in their camp, someone must have gone. Hold up, let's actually tell him about this. Let's see his opinion. I, I'm telling you, Chucky. Do you know another thing? I can't Im- imagine a, a, like how a scenario. You, I mean, how can Drake, but how could Drake be a lot like? Again, this is just, I'm not, because this is making it sound mad, yeah, but I'm just giving a point, yeah. Drake is a very woman orientated man. Or orient, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. yeah. He speaks a lot about women, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chopping, heartbreak, love, fucking, all these types of stuff, yeah. I can't see how a man would think let's put a paedophile sample on there so that like people look at the credit and they have and we have a conversation Chucky. about it right, let's, that let's, is a may, uh, wait, no, no, but maybe wait, he just loved finish. the sample that's an absolute madness all right let me just... yes he might have just loved the sample I and can't... gone fuck it the music the sample is, separate is so to the fake person. in there by the way it's so fake. wait wait hold on i need to warn you on this though i need to warn you on this because we know. can't we can't not do this and say this <laughs> i don't have rona who Sorry. was on scorpion what legacy act was on Scorpion? He's passed away. Michael Jackson. Oh, of course. What does Michael Jackson have? Now, uh, listen. Not confirmed. In this room, we love Michael. In right. this room. We love do him. Do we? You not, do you not, are you not? You uh, don't, uh, you, I'm just saying. You don't listen to Michael Jackson's music still? I I played, um, played some off the wall stuff the other day. All right, well, cool. Says, but, that says enough. No, 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 no stop, stop. That says enough. So, so, so this is what I'm saying. Yeah. So if my man's had them allegations for time and there's been all these documentary and everything. I actually didn't, by the way. And he yeah, put yeah. him on Scorpion, a song, literally his vocals. Thank you. No one said nothing about it. I agree. So now if we put R. Kelly in as just a little mixed in dub, what does it matter? And hold on, just to further my point about what you're saying about him being a ladies man, he should have maybe fought twice or it's mad. The album's about toxic masculinity. Mm. So he's not actually respecting females that much on this album anyway. So 
It's not like he's done some beautiful keep your head up song like Tupac did or Dear Mama where he's like talking about women in a, do you know what I'm saying? In an angelic yeah, light. Yeah. He has done that at times on there. Yeah, yeah. But it says in the album notes, toxic masculinity that's resulted in a heartbreak. And to me, when I listen to the album, it's very derogatory towards women, actually. It's actually yeah. pushing forward the narrative of be a player, crush yeah. a lot, sleep with many women, never settle down. These are the themes throughout this album. So I don't really... He talks, about, he his, he talks, about, he talks about his kid a lot now and his co-parenting good and all these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. But with that being said, though, I, I would say the difference between those two are is that a lot of people would say, yeah, on one side, they don't believe the allegations against Michael Jackson. That's a lot of what a lot of people say. A lot of people hold that opinion. A lot of people turn around and say, you know what, we don't believe that. You'll find R. Kelly fans that feel like that. You of course. <laughs> you find you, them. Of course. Of course. Weirdos, you will. but you'll find them. Of course you will. But I think that like the situation in which R. Ke- R. Kelly is going through right now, which Michael Jackson didn't actually end up having to go through again because of the fact well, he did go through it earlier on, but he Yeah, he did go through call. Yeah, he didn't yeah, pass, he paid he him bu- off. Yeah, he first time off. he paid, second time Isn't he bust. Exactly. Pay, paying him off isn't what well, in the eyes of Loris not R. Kelly, of guilt, R. Kelly but it is got, an admission of guilt. R. Kelly ain't got five ten mil to pay off each person he did. I'm not saying listen, I'm not saying Michael did, I'm not saying he did it because he wasn't trialed. So he yeah. you know, God rest his soul. All I'm saying is he paid off, man, innit? A lot of parents got I paid agree. off in, in the uh, the first case in like 91, 92. A lot of people got paid off. Right. He was like a billionaire early. Like he had the bread to go, yeah, you're 10, you get 10. What? 10? You want a 15? You're like, he said over a couple of times that time, 15 for you. Shouldn't be making jokes about this. Oh, but you okay. get what I'm saying. The parents yeah. accepted the money and that's where it went. Right. With Michael Jackson's thing, it's just still very unclear, innit? We just don't really know really what went down. And that's why I think you get away with still that's, listening to his music. That's, or, you're, speaking, that's exact, you're speaking to his point. That's man. exactly my point. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly no, what I'm is. saying. Because the Michael Jackson thing is still unclear. Yes. Regardless of what we say, it's still unclear. Yes. With the, with the R. Kelly one, it looks like it's bang to rights now. Yeah, it is. As it much is, as whether we, is. regardless of what we say, it looks bang to rise now so it's with that Adam being Johnson said it's like there's an argument there there's an argument to say with the, with the Michael Jackson thing when I did yeah it's unclear like we could debate that or whatever this R. Kelly thing is a bit more of a difficult one to debate especially in this day and age if this was in the late 90s early 2000s or whatever it may not have been so much of an issue because we didn't have social media and stuff like that then uh, but now but everyone then, everyone seems to care about stuff now but then it can go deeper than this then so then what do we say for like oh it's like Jay-Z who made two albums of R. Kelly and apparently back then they knew what was yeah, going on I mean, well, that's, and I'm, turn a blind eye and now you can't find those projects on streaming uh-huh. no of course they, they, it's like they've evaporated from the history books no, unless you put it on CD you ain't finding those projects bro best of both worlds so but I agree with that though what, we can't now no but I I, I agree with that though. Oh, okay. So I agree with that. I'm not saying that that was right and this is wrong. Mm. I'm saying both of it's mad. I'm saying, but if you I'm knew, just if you industry. knew, that's what I'm saying. This is, it's it all is, about it, this. Right. But that's still mad though. Because yeah. if you knew, especially as a big man or whatever, oh, that this is what my man's doing mm. and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. And you're still making music with him like that. It's still mad. I'm going to put fair. you on the spot though. I'm sorry. I have to. Go on. Are you still listening to TSU? I am listening to TSU. There we go. Eva. <laughs> That's a banger. I'm still listening it's to it. It's an absolute banger. I, 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 I want to know but, if the people that are doing this. that are going to stop listening you, to it. Let me tell you this, yeah. Let me tell you this. It would be a lot more techy if the sample was so evident. Because I'm listening to it and I'm like, I don't even... I would never have known. I would never have known. I can't even hear it. I can't I can't hear R. Kelly's voice. You know, like when you listen to... um, What's the song with... uh, What? Um, R. Kelly and Marcus Houston that always gets played up in the club. No, and you hear Joe him Biden say, it's the Piper. Piper. It's like, yeah, you hear his voice that. and you're like, oh my God, why do you still, like, I love the rhythm, but I can't hear nothing. I can't hear, and I was, let me tell you this now, there wasn't a bigger R. Kelly fan than me. Yeah. I'll tell you that I, now. I, I, but, what? <laughs> I, the music, the music. Crazy. We, it's, I mean, even though it's all techie and some of the stuff he's saying and all of that type of stuff, yeah, sonically, the music is incredible know, stuff. It's different. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Happy people. As an artist, we know he's like elite caliber, bro. Man yeah, was yeah. writing for Michael Jackson in the nineties. Right. That's a bit of a mad thing in exactly. itself. Man writing for him. But um, Wait, I'm, sa- I'm, just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, in the nineties, on one I'm of them just saying, albums in the nineties. The, the sample's so faint. The sample's so faint. It just didn't even need to be a thing. Mm. It wasn't. It's not like it's a thing where it's like this is such a cold song. You know, like how people use. Um, 
the old what's that house rhythm and let me play you this um sample that gets used over and over and over again it's this yeah he this wrote... that's Wait, a sample yeah that is like people just constantly use that sample they always mm. and it's like it's it gets used in different tempos it gets used in um different fucking um genres and all of these type of things It'd be different if it was that. You can't even hear that. Does it even need to be there? Mm. It didn't need to be a conversation. No, it, didn't. It, it didn't need to be nothing. Can I just quickly say as well, sorry, R. Kelly, okay. R. Kelly wrote, um, You Are Not Alone for Michael Jackson. That was the one. Oh, God. You Are right Not here. Alone. Oh. And by the way, the Pied Piper thing in hindsight. You Are now, Not Alone. I, I, I am here with you. Uh, you know, you said the Pied Piper thing. In hindsight, that is the wildest drop. He put in all our faces subliminally and we had no clue that is That's dark outrageous. nasty shit bro brother because you, you know the story of the pied piper right in in in, in folk tale and all i'm that. telling you it's wild that he did that and got away with it for years spoke about what they were doing to who? who michael and um, nah, nah oh nah, god nah, don't nah. do that nah because nah, nah, nah. you gotta remember you gotta remember let's be real i don't, don't even want to get into that. it no hold on hold on i don't want to get yeah, into it they're gonna be that bait in a song about it no 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 but because it's like michael oh this is so mad to even say michael liked kids R. Kelly liked teenage underage girls. Like it was, uh, like yeah, Michael, yeah, yeah. Michael was sitting in the bed like, with oh, six. Oh, we both like stuff. beer, but I like this one. You like that? <laughs> no, but, but it's like it's the same. It's two no, shades no, 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 of no, the no, same no, wrong. No, no it's, they're both wrong. We know that, and it yeah. is two shades of the same wrong. But what I'm saying is, they're not going to sit there and talk about it because uh, no, R. Kelly, R. Most, Kelly but... had also had 19 year olds in his house locked away. Remember that he was yeah, grooming, yeah, yeah. and he had yeah, 16 no. year olds, and he had all of this. Michael wasn't interested in 19 or 16 year olds. Yeah, it was like he wanted to hang around with kids that like theme parks, bro. Yeah, I know, but and we're not. We don't know if Michael did it or not, but I'm just saying that's the facts are he liked kids, 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 kids. But past that age of like right and wrong, it doesn't matter how like which yeah, they're both one. morally yeah, incorrect, they're wrong, of yeah, course. I, right. I'm just saying to your point, I don't think they would have sat down yeah, and yeah, 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 spoke yeah. about because Michael, was, Michael, Michael ain't going to be interested in the things that R. Kelly's interested in. Yeah, now. put it this way, like he you know, like a, he has Michael, like a kid himself. Like, like R. Kelly's not going to be. They're not going to be sitting around the table while flipping um, <laughs> R. Kelly's Jones. drinking a wine and. And Michael Jackson's drinking a fucking slush puppy. Yeah. <laughs> <Talking about. laughs> you know what I'm sun. saying? Yeah. Oh, Kelly, Milkshake. want some? Like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Running yeah, around the studio. Oh, Kelly's like, sit down, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> it's all it's all nuts, literally. Yeah. But I don't know, bro. It's anyway, wild. Overall, this ended on a wild getting... note. I don't know I how know. we ended yeah, here. Sorry, that was a kind of... Well, like, it, just to wrap it up very, very quick, yeah. Today, yeah. even though not much time has gone, gone by, what are you giving it out of 10? And where are you rating it amongst his other body of work? Um, early Doors, obviously only three days of listening to it. I'll give CLB, I'll give it a seven okay. out of 10. Um, and amongst his body of work, it's hard to say right now, but I, I don't know if it, I don't think it makes top five, bro. Right. If we put So Far Gone in the mix, it's not making top five. It's not. Right. Nothing one of the same is in there, Take Care, So Far There's a few albums where he really brought it, but yeah. For me, it's still a solid body of work with a lot of music in it that you can listen to. I've got different moods that I can take in from it. And I'm probably, it's gonna be in my rotation heavily, definitely, definitely. for the next month or two yeah, at definitely. least. Um, Yeah, I'm seven and a half, I'd say. Ooh, okay. And um, I would say if it made his top five, it would be five. I don't think it would be any higher than that yeah. so far. But it will be interesting to see how we, um, how we take that in what once we fully digest mm. it what about donda though did we do the rating on donda what did you give we donda? did it now i give donda a six i'll give donda as i think i'll give donda a seven as, can we do point i'll give donda a 6.8 6.8 6. i think it's just below it's drake high, huh it's quite high. you think so i think it's just below drake i've musically liked donda i just think yeah, I just don't think Kanye didn't bring it enough on that. Fair. And and in terms, actually, no, I'm going lower, man. I'm going, I'm going to go a six or a six point five because in his discography, it doesn't make anywhere near top five. Yeah, yeah no in way, Kanye's no discography. way. It doesn't even no come way, close, no so. way. All right, listen. Anyway, this one, eh? Oh, um, but what was this called again? Uh, in uh, into deep. Oh yeah, into deep, whatever. Um. Girls want girls, by the way. That's gonna do a madness in the club. They broke the record. They broke the record on Spotify. Is it, yeah? in a single day. And um, way too sexy. 
quickly flipping. I didn't like it at first, but then it's kind of grown on me. I'm not lying. I feel like that one's gonna go off. I heard it in Michael Dabba's dance the other day. It, it went mad. Did it? Yeah. The girls oh, were twerking like crazy. The twerkulator, the percolating, and the twerkulating was going off. That's gonna go mad. People will not even. They may not even have been outside when that first rhythm. Uh, all so, right. Okay. What's the Let's um? Uh, it's just you know so the, silly. Do you know the original, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah by the what are them brothers? Red Dead or something. Right, right, right said Fred. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know because they play them them type of tunes on talk sports sometimes, and I'm just like, I lock it off, right? Way too sexy. Is it even on the thing? Yeah, that's it. You, yeah, you're good too with sexy this. For my love, too sexy. Are you, you lot went outside. With, wait, hold on one second. You lot definitely a hundred percent was d fucking now. Yeah, this was like, this must have been in the early 90s. Didn't it say, say that? No? Yeah, this must have been early 90s or something like that. Way too sexy. Fucking hell. All right, listen, thanks for listening, everyone. We didn't do the thing that everyone should know. But actually, can I just quickly do that? H. Oh, you motherfucker. Let me do that. What is it? Quick. How did you spell it on, how did he spell it on thing? Oh, I've got it here. It is. We could do it as a collective one. H-A-I-C-H. -H. There's a song, yeah, King called of King of the Summer. It's by H, yeah? H-A-I-C-H. -H. Go and listen to that rhythm. Go and listen to that rhythm and then thank me later. Mitch, love for coming through, my bro. Proper appreciate it. Your pod. Tell them quickly. Double Down Podcast, check it out, man. We're back with the visuals as well, so yeah. Say that again. Double Down Podcast, me and my boy Nick Dream. We're back with the visuals, so yeah, check that out, man. Love. Love. I'll be back on there as well. Come on. Be